How much do you have in your wallet right now? You don't have to comment that. It is purely a rhetorical question, but let me get to the point. There's at least a few of you who may not have much cash in your wallets. Maybe you're used to swiping your credit cards more and that's fine. I'm kind of one of those guys. But were you aware that almost half of all credit card users in the United States is carrying debt from month to month, getting bent over by the credit card companies with higher and higher interest rates? Now, while this is happening, prices of food continue to soar and this has left many to get by with, wait, I'll give you a second to just kind of guess as to what what Americans are using during this time. And that's right, many are getting by with their credit cards. And if you thought that due to the lower CPI numbers, we're bound to see lower food prices, you would be sadly mistaken. Plenty of food items continue to go up in price and I have a few that you might wanna stock up on before we can't afford them anymore. Now, as always, go ahead and smash the like button before we continue. And if you're a fan of the truth, I give you a daily dose of it, especially when it comes to the US economy, social security, SSI, SSDI, passive income, SNAP, EBT, and everything that's going on in Washington, D.C. that affects our lives, our families, our investments, and our bank accounts. And of course, all the possibilities for 2023. You get all this when you subscribe to the channel. <laughs> all right, guys. Also, if you own a home, make sure your home is protected. Get your free home warranty quote. The link is in the description down below. Okay, so whenever I go out, I usually have a backup plan for a couple of things. If I know I'm going to be out for like a long period of time, I probably bring an extra power bank for my phone, you know, just in case I'm in a situation where my phone runs out of battery and I know there's probably nowhere to charge it. I always bring change because you never know where you need to park. I also bring cash at the chance that online payments or payments through credit cards are not being accepted on a particular day. Now, for some people, this is common practice. It's what a backup plan looks like and it's kind of how you stay ahead, right? Basic preparation. The FAA should have thought about this as recent outages caused thousands of flight delays and cancellations in different parts of the country. More than 10,000 flights were delayed and more than 1,300 canceled yesterday after the FAA ordered a nationwide ground stop due to a computer glitch. Nationwide, everything shut down and travelers may still be affected today. A sea of red delay boards and parked planes from coast to coast halted flyers for hours Wednesday morning. I'm really upset, but what can I do? The FAA is still working to understand why backup systems failed to keep the notice to air mission system running. The primary NOTAM system started going down Tuesday afternoon. It had to be reset early Wednesday, leading to the nearly unprecedented nationwide ground stop. They're already denying a cyber attack, but isn't it weird that many of our key infrastructures are being hit one after another? We've already seen electric grids going down through sheer vandalism. Imagine what this could do to aviation, but this could just be a huge misunderstanding. I mean, systems go down every now and then, right? But here's the plot twist. Canada was hit with a very similar aviation outage as flights here at home resumed. <laughs> what? That has to be the most amazing coincidence I've ever seen in my whole life. But still, they continue to tell us that these are not connected to one another. These are isolated incidences. They're just coincidences. I stopped believing in those years ago. And you know what Canada said? They also said that this was not due to a cyber crime, kind of like what happened in the United States. Now, if instances like these don't make you prepare for electric grid shutting down or our entire aviation system melting, I don't know what will. I have a flashlight always ready to go at home. What do you guys have? I have food, water, medicine. I'm ready to face all possibilities at this point. Heck, I'm even looking for a whole home generator. Let me know if you guys have any recommendations on that. Obviously, it's not like I want these things to happen, but we're already starting to see a trend. Shouldn't we do something that's gonna help prepare us? Now, speaking of preparing, we may see food runs happening soon since the cost of food is expected to go even higher. Now, which items may be off the shelves soon? Well, let's start with eggs, shall we? So the price of eggs spiked to almost 60% back in December. Putting that into perspective, a carton of grade A large eggs would cost you $1.79 in December, 2021. So if you're into fitness or even bodybuilding, yeah, your protein just got a whole heck of a lot more expensive. Fast forward to a year later and now it's $4.25. This has some people joking that eggs might very well be the next Bitcoin. Supply Supplies of it may run dry as experts predict that avian flu will continue to affect egg production in the long term. Now we're also seeing butter melt our dollars as it rose by 31.5% back in December, up from 27% from the month prior. Heat and smaller cows are now being blamed for the possible shortage. Now one thing that kind of hits home with me when I read stuff like this is I know how it's going to affect my household. Now I've already set preparation for my family beforehand, but then my mind starts to kind of wonder, think about other people. 
how they're going to lose out on opportunities to buy food because, you know, maybe they don't have as much or, you know, maybe they're trying to save their money for a rainy day. We know that SNAP and EBT emergency allotments are getting smaller and smaller. Some who are on fixed income like Social Security, SSI, SSDI, these are the folks who are really struggling immensely with everything that's happening in our economy and with inflation around us. Now, here's something that you should be aware of. Existing home sales in the real estate market that closed in November has plunged by 35 percent year over year. Now, just doing the math on that, that is the 16th month in a row of year over year home price, real estate, residential real estate declines. This is just a crash of epic proportions. And the worst part is that this is not even near done yet. There's a lot more to go. There is more pain and all the time in the world for us to feel it. Pain can usually be defined in another four letter word. This one is called debt. Now, when I say that we should avoid debt, I mean it. Debt is slowly going to take away all of your financial freedom. It's going to block you from better financial opportunities. Opportunities and, and increasing your debt while your cash flow remains stagnant or even declining spells trouble. This is why I'm so alarmed to see households debt go up by 7.65% compared to last year. So what's that in dollars? Oh, not that much. It's just $16.5 trillion. I said trillion with a T. Yes, I did. But let's look at the averages on that. Now, when it comes to housing and mortgages, the average is at $222,000. Now, with credit card bills, it's at $17,000. When it comes to auto loans, the average is at $29,000. Student debt, it's a tricky one since the forgiveness of most of that is in limbo, but the average would be around $58,000. Sarah Rathner, a credit cards expert for NerdWallet, she said, quote, credit card debt is often thought to be the result of frivolous spending, but for many Americans, that's just not true. Consumers are feeling the squeeze of higher prices and interest rates, and paychecks just aren't keeping up. That's forcing many to make tough decisions like going into debt to pay for necessities, end quote. Some may think that the number on this shouldn't be that high. But according to the data, almost half of cardholders now carry debt from month to month. I saw this calculation on bank rate on CNBC, and I thought I would share it with you guys. It says at 19.6%, if you made minimum payments toward your average credit card balance, it doesn't matter if it's Visa, MasterCard, American Express, which is $5,474 according to TransUnion, it would take you almost 17 years to pay off the debt and cost you more than $7,528 in interest. Now, this is insane, guys. If you're building debt because you've given up, don't do this. And I hope you guys paid attention to the numbers that I just shared with you guys. You would actually spend more in interest than you would have actually spent on the products themselves. And I know it's easy to give up when it feels like things are not going right with your life. I know that I've been there, but I also believe that you can chip away at the debt inch by inch. It's not going to be easy, but you know, we should all try to clean up our debt one way or another. Now, me personally, I did the, the debt snowball. I tackled my highest interest rate debt first and kind of worked my way down. So you might be asking, what's a good way to start doing that, right? Well, for one, improve your cash flow. If you can start creating multiple streams of income through either side hustles or starting a small business, you can also learn more about budgeting and how this affects your monthly wages. Or of course, if you got a little extra cash, you can become an investor, maybe even invest in real estate through REITs, perhaps even in the stock market. But the next question should be, well, how do I begin? Well, for that question, if you want, you can join us over in the Patreon community. You'll find a link in the description down below where you can join other like-minded people who are interested in creating small businesses, even side hustles, perhaps even online businesses for the very first time. You guys will find a link for the Patreon community. The link is in the description down below. But before I go, please do your boy a favor, drop a like for the video. Also subscribe for your daily dose of the truth. Appreciate y'all watching. You guys are awesome. I'll see you on the next one.